infrastructure has never been one of Louisiana's strengths. <laughs> what a great sentence to begin there with. And I'm always amazed by the travel required in the Mid-South Territory. Then there are the fans. I've heard Jim make mention of riots in South Louisiana. What was the scariest town? Where was the worst riot? I'm guessing Homa for both. Uh, I was uh, homo is what came to mind, actually. I mean, we were in a place one time <laughs> that, I, that I don't know that I would have gone back to, even for Bill Watts. Uh, Galliano, which is farther down south than Homa, just like it's a fishing village. And they were just all drunk and fucked up there. But uh, Homa, we had said that's where they tried to fucking kill me and Dennis Condry in the parking lot and the Rock and Roll Express you know, drove their car into the crowd and, and Dr. Death and Hercules beat up about 14 ringsiders, <laughs> uh, as we were being backed into the goddamn locker room where we were locked for the next half an hour by the police, so they could clear the buildings. Uh, Homa was not, no, Homa was not a, a, a lovely place. Uh, so that, that was, that was the scariest, but uh, he said something else too. What was the other part of the question? Where was the scariest? What was the worst riot? Oh, the wor- the worst ride was in Baton Rouge. <laughs> well, no, maybe in Tulsa. In well, I got I got actually got uh, uh, charges filed on me in Baton Rouge, but the Tulsa riot that we had when when they had internal affairs investigate the police brutality on the fans was probably was a worse riot. So t- Tulsa was really violent and redneck and drunk and cowboy and every car in the parking lot was a pickup truck but baton rouge and in the old days new orleans but they got a a grip on that town with that you know the extra security and the wide uh area you had around the ring especially in the downtown auditorium but baton rouge was was bad too and at one night when the guy dove over the rail the cops were walking us back guy dove over the rail and swung and I ducked him right (laughs) as he swung to hit me in the face I ducked him and I start trying to whack him with the racket as the police are trying to to fucking grab him and Dundee who's the booker he's not wrestling there yet so nobody really knew who he was he runs out because he had been at the end of the walkway making sure we got back he runs out and he just gave one of his driving working punches inside this guy's head bam and went pap 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 in the front of the uh, as the guy went down in the general admission seats, right? So anyway, they come back and and I get charged with a battery because I actually on my drawback I whacked a cop in the head when I was trying to whack the guy in front of me. I whacked the guy behind me, and Dundee just got in the car and left, and they couldn't find him or what his name was. They <laughs> put down unidentified wrestler. Right. And he just he wasn't working. To, right. He, was he just wasn't working. working. He was the booker. He just, he just came from the locker room. So he, fuck, he just didn't go back to Baton Rouge for a couple of times. And, it, but in, in the newspaper, that's where the headline was wrestling spectator fed to the lions because everybody got a shot in at this guy. We were hitting each other trying to hit the guy because the cops hit him. Dundee hit him. I think I hit him. I'm not sure. Uh, but it, we, we got sued over that and, and etc. Uh, you say anything in South Louisiana, but Lake Charles was horrible. Uh, Lake Charles is, is where that the people like put Drano in water squirt guns so they could shoot the heels like Akbar at, at, in the eyes. Since the, the security was so good, they couldn't physically get to you on the way to and from the ring because they had like 10 cops that formed a circle around the heels and kept people back. So they had to either try to get you at ringside or in the parking lot, or they'd come up with the creative ways like the, the squirt gun. Um, the people, when the Freebirds drove there, they cut the Freebirds tires on their car. So the Freebirds started going to the police station and getting the cops to drive them over to the building. And they cut the tires on the police car that brought the Freebirds. And they would glue your, you know, squirt glue in your uh, uh, car door locks, or they'd try to sugar your, I, I ever, all the heels had locking gas tank lids because they'd try to fuck up your gas tank. Um, it just, you know, the, a lot of times the, the canines, They'd send over two of the canine units because the cops with the big German shepherds on the leash would be the ones to walk the heels from the back door to their cars in the parking lot after the show. That was the guest security. We need to get to the car. And then they'd get us in the car. They'd say, okay, good luck. Don't stop. See you later. 
So if they want to chase you to the interstate, they you know they could do that too. Two stories I remember. Tell me what towns they were in. One where security surrounded you after the match and just said run, and then the one where you said Bill Watts was standing on some guy's head. <laughs> Tulsa, both of them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was after the last stampede match with Watts and Dog in Tulsa. They dressed me in a dress, right? So I've, I'm, I've got my tennis racket because they left that at ringside. So after they beat me up and got rid of me, and the Watts and Dog are standing in the ring watching this every night. That's how Watts knew that we still had enough heat. He could keep us in the territory after this because I roll out of the ring and I grab the racket and I've got men's dress shoes, a pink dress on, and a, um, and a racket. And and the cops surround me, and it was at the the fairgrounds, not the the downtown assembly center in Tulsa, but the fairgrounds coliseum that we use sometimes. And it had a huge floor area for the rodeos, and so the ring was in the middle of the building, and it was sold out. And it's not a wrestler exaggeration; it was oversold uh, because the seats, the the space behind the ringside seats were filled with standing people. So once you got through ringside. It was just a big field of people standing right? <laughs> that we had to walk through with no ropes, no barricade, no fuck all or nothing. So as I roll out and the cops get around me and they go run and they're forming a human wedge around me and we're running, right? And I'm holding my hands over my head. And every time somebody tries to get me and one of the cops has to stop and grab them and tackle them or whatever, they get tied up. I'm losing cops. And there's more people than there are cops. <laughs> So when it, it literally in the space of from to back of ringside, I lost all but one cop. However, may I start out with six or whatever. And he looked at me and I've seen a look at his guy's face. And he says, run, fuck. <laughs> and so I started fucking running and people are trying to kick and hit. And I'm, I'm helicoptering the, the tennis racket over my head in spin, spinning it as fast as I can. And I'm running as fast as I can. And they're kicking my legs and I'm off kilter, but I'm, I'm, my feet are going too fast to go down. And I was faster in those days. And that's where, and that's where Jim Ross was standing in front of Watts's Rolls Royce. Cause they pulled it in because of the thunderstorm. And there, once I broke through the, 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 the people and it was the final home stretch, they start throwing cups of ice and beer cans and everything at me. And Jr. saying, get away from the car. You know, like, psh, psh, It'll look like goddamn a combat scene from a fucking World War II movie getting back into the locker room. And what Watts stood, that was the uh, second time, second or third show we did in Tulsa. Once again, as we're going back, this guy runs from wherever the fuck. And he did one of those goddamn forward dives over the railing and past the cops that were around us and got me right in the nose. Boom, square in the nose. And immediately both sides start spurting blood. And I'm like, what the fuck? And cross my eyes. And Bobby and Dennis go for the guy. But so does the goddamn cops. And it's a giant scuffle. And here comes everybody else and gets involved. And Grizzly Smith is coming out trying to fucking get us back. And all the other fans are trying to get shots while they're wrestling this guy down. As a matter of fact, Grizzly had him had two handfuls of guy's hair and was pulling him back into the locker room as we were rushing. And Bobby Eaton had gotten the racket and was trying to whack the guy in the head, but was taking all the skin off of Grizzly's knuckles. Grizzly screaming, Bobby, God damn it. Right. So anyway, <laughs> They pull us through under the overhang there where you go out from the arena into the segue into the locker room area. There's fucking Watts and I'm covered in blood now. And I'm like, get and he, they hold me back. <laughs> Cause the guy's already laying on the floor anyway. Cause he don't know what the fuck's happened to it. They hold me back, but Watts, it, it, he walks up and spreads the cops out, right? Like <laughs> spread out. <laughs> he, picks his, <laughs> he picks his fucking guy up and he shoves him up against the wall and he gives a pretty good fucking size guy, but not next to Watts, but he was bigger than I was. He said, so you want to beat up my wrestlers, huh? And he's trying to fucking punch the guy. But the guy, as soon as he saw who Watts was, he starts trying to duck down and cover his head up against the wall like that. So Watts can't get, so he pushes the guy back up and puts his left hand, the guy's left hand, he grabs his wrist and puts it up against the wall and says, Grizz, hold this. And Grizzly <laughs> holds the guy's hand and he pushes him in the fucking face <laughs> and drops him. And as he's laying down there, 
Watts got up with, and this night he was not wearing his cowboy boots. He was wearing fucking sneakers. God damn it. Because it was Tulsa. He was home, you know, so he, he wasn't going to go out in front of the people. He was always at the matches in Tulsa. He fucking stands with both feet on the side of this guy's head, with it, basically standing on the guy's ear, if you can imagine that, with the guy's face right just like that on the goddamn concrete floor. And, roar, and he said, don't ever come back to one of my shows again. Don't ever fuck with my people again. <laughs> and as he, as he gets off of <laughs> He just tells the guy, cops, all right, take him out. <laughs> and they pick him up and they carried him wherever the fuck they carried him and took him wherever the fuck they took him to. Wow. And I guarantee you, he didn't. And, and of course, I, I'm like, yeah, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like spitting blood every time I try to say anything. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck you.